So one of the problems with the Perenni, with the soft top on that, it's not secure. And how you get them from the auctions is that they don't have door locks. So since then I've put door locks on. I've got a hard top on because my canvas top was had it and where I was living I needed security. So I've got that on but unfortunately I've still got the problem with the window locks. The driver side's not too bad but the passenger side, this is locked. And then all you have to do is reach your arm in and unlock the door. So at the moment it's not secure. So just to show you, that's the window locked. Even though it's not really. Unlocked. No difference. You will notice down here, there should be a screw in there, which is missing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put a screw in there just to see if it makes any difference. So I do have a new window lock for the passenger side, RRC4879, which is a genuine Land Rover one. They're pretty hard to get and cost a lot of money if you do get one. And you can see here that it does have the screw in there, whereas over this one it's missing. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take this one out, put it in there just to see if that makes a difference. I don't think it will, but we'll see. So you can see it's quite a long screw that goes in and it comes out just here. So I just tried putting the screw in and it was going in a little bit but then it was getting quite tight. So I've decided that I'm just going to take the whole lock mechanism out, uh, put it in that way and I can also check to see if there's wear and if there is then I'll just replace it or fix it. I've also noticed this is quite loose as is. So here's the two locks, the old one and the new one both in the lock position. So this is the new and the old lock side by side. You can see there's a few small differences. You've got this spring plate here which is a little bit different. I don't know if you can see. Bit of the difference there. Um, with that, you've got the two screws here. One's got the flat head, one's got the Phillips. Not that that should really matter. Now the main part I think in these that does the locking, which determines whether you window is going to stay locked or not is this part just here you can see just up here well, there's a bit of a ridge so that's locked unlocked and that's when this part just here will bump up against the screw so unlocked and locked now if I do that with the old one it's probably can't tell much of a difference so that's in locked position Unlock and locked. Now it's probably a little bit different when it's actually got this part here pressed in against the window. Another part that has a bit of wear on it, this is the part that goes up against the window just here. And on the new one, it's all flat, whereas on the old one, I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually rounded off. You can see the wear on it compared to the new one where it's flat square on the edges. So whether that's making a bit of a difference, I'm not sure. So this is the old lock. Before when I was trying to put this screw in, I couldn't put it in. It was getting tight and the reason was because I actually had it unlocked and this part here was actually covering the screw hole. So I was actually trying to screw in to this part of the mechanism. Now before, because it was in the door, I wasn't sure what it looked like, so I didn't know. But now I know and so do you. So you can see, unlocked, hits up against it, and locked. But when I go to lock, even you can see that this part here doesn't really move too much. So unlock, lock, unlock, lock. 
Now I'm just going to compare that against a new one. Okay, so that's unlocked. And I can feel there's more pressure and you could see that it'd move up a bit more with the new one. Okay, so now I've just got it sitting back in. I haven't put these screws in, which won't matter for this. So I'm just going to try. So that's unlocked, locked. Yeah, no different. Didn't think there would be. So now I'm going to take it back out and I'm going to see if I can put something in this area here. I'm going to try and jam something just in that groove part there, which should make this part here come down, giving more pressure on the lock. So the first one I'm going to try is using a matchstick, which I did read online about people using that. Uh, I'm not so sure about the wood falling out, especially because it rattles a lot, but at the same time, I don't know, maybe the wood will take up a bit more than something harder like steel. So I'm just going to put this in that area there, we'll see. Now I'm using the full length of that gap, which may put it too much, we'll see. Okay, so you can see there the matchstick is in that gap, which has made this spring out more. So I'm going to try that in now and see if that works. Okay, so unlock. It's firmer, but it's still not good enough. So the next thing I'm going to do is try cutting this part here off, which is the lid just to a ballpoint pen. So this is a bit wider and the thickness changes as it gets closer to the cap of the lid. So we'll see. Not as thick as the matchstick though, so I can see it there unlock and then lock don't think it's going to work by looking at that but we'll see So I did just try with the ballpoint pen lid and it was about the same as the matchstick. It made it a bit stiffer but it's still nowhere near lockable. So I'm going to try and go really thick on this. If that doesn't work, I'm thinking it might be this part up here. So what I've done is I've just cut off a little bit of the lid off the ballpoint pen and I've put it right near the front or the opening to that part and I'm going to see how that goes because that's actually making this wider pushing that down more okay and lock so you can see it's a lot harder but it's still not quite but it's an improvement which means that I might be on the right so I've gone for even a little bit thicker now and that gap's much wider. So, see how that goes this time. Pretty close. So this time I'm just gonna put the new lock in just to see if that 
it does fix it. If not, it might be something else. Okay, that's definitely fixed it. So, I'm thinking the difference is going to be in this part here where on the old one it has worn. Probably can't see it well enough, but especially here it has worn the, that part of it. So it's now got quite a rounded edge on it. I'm thinking that's going to be the difference. So <clears throat> I've only got a little bit of movement now on this one here, the front one. But this one's solid, much better than what I had before. So I'm just going to show you again. So this is a new one. You can see on top here how it's all square, flat. They're only slightly rounded off on the corners. And the old one. Okay, that side's actually not as bad, but if I spin it around, you can see just here how much damage there is and there is some on top as well all along this side quite a groove in there now there was a guy telling me that you can uh, build it up with some sort of compound and then you can just file it smooth can't remember exactly what he said but I'm sure you could figure it out and there'd be a few different solutions to that and I reckon that would work and that'd be a cheap fix um, but I have quite a few of these they're all passenger side ones I think I've got about 15 of them, but you can just take the guts out of them, I reckon, you'd put them on the other side without any problem. As you can actually see in the front here, there's an extra hole there where you could put, put a hole in for that screw to go there, which would make it then the driver's side. Obviously, you need to flip this around, but it wouldn't be too hard. And once again, a lot cheaper than buying them new for... I think I've seen them for $160 for one side and $400 and something another side, which is ridiculous for a window lock.